Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for the introduction. I think that penis cover will stick with me forever. But, you know, that's good. I'm from Amsterdam, so it's, it's all good. I'm so very proud um, for the next speaker that she accepted my invitation. Uh, when I came out of art school, she was the one doing all the cool stuff. Uh, so I gotta admit, I think she's the best designer in the Netherlands. Um, she combines the less is more approach with aesthetic elements. Uh, she's really on the edge in public magazine design. Um, and now I know she's working on a digital project where I'm also very curious about. Uh, so please welcome Sabine Verschuren. Wow. Um, yeah. Thanks, uh, Jaap, for this uh, wonderful introduction. <laughs> Uh, well, hello, I'm uh, Sabine Verschuren um, and I'm an Amsterdam-based designer. My studio is specialized in editorial design, books, newspapers, websites and especially uh, magazines have my love. That's why I've chosen to show you some highlights of my magazine design. My first magazine. Uh, Peuter magazine, it's a uh, Todd magazine. 44 years ago, I was nine years old. The circulation was two. I made this for my two-year-old brother and his friend. Each month, I copied it by hand. There were no copiers at the time. By then, I seemed to be aware of a few things I had to learn later from marketing managers with whom I often have a challenging relationship. To name a few. Use many colors. I have a tendency to be sparingly with color. Be sure there's always a reason to open the magazine. Be aware of your target group. I kept on publishing this for two years. Meanwhile, my brother and his friend grew older so my target group changed. <laughs> uh, so I changed the name of the magazine from Peuter magazine, Tot magazine, into Kleuter magazine, Toddler magazine. And uh, here you see, take a look here, there you find something at this page, too. Now we make a big step to the second magazine I was involved in from scratch. In between, I was an art director of a business magazine, Quote, and a fashion magazine, L. CARP, a magazine for young professionals starting their career. <laughs> we had the luxury we didn't have to sell this magazine in a kiosk. It was a controlled circulation. Personal finance. Our con cover concept was simple. We wanted to give our readers the opportunity to make their own stories just by giving them an image and one word. Patsoen means decency. Our former prime minister was always proclaiming decency standards. Sex, no comment on this. Uh, relax. Here we try to make relaxing pages by using almost no words the whole issue. Photography photographed by Marnix Schoosens. Rails. The magazine offered, this magazine is offered for free in the train. The, the theme uh, was jungle. The only text line were the two extra airs in front of the logo. 
And this is a fashion series on this theme, shot by Wendelin Daan. Avenue, an, an iconic fashion and lifestyle magazine relaunched after it has been five years off the market. We thought this blank cover would really stand out in the kiosk where all the, the other headlines are screaming for attention. And we thought the reputation of this title was big enough to make people grab it anyway. My by then two-year-old daughter didn't agree and made her own edition, <laughs> which is definitely much better. <laughs> oh, uh, this is a magazine for uh, Rijksmuseum Amsterdam. They wanted to shed new light on their famous collection of art and history. Here I've made a mix between a typographic cover and an image cover. In this issue, our theme was animals. We decided to show only animals table of content, even the famous Dutch writer Remco Kampert was, re was represented by his cat. A few pages. We sent Raymond Wouda to photograph locations in Holland where historical people were held captive. This glasswork was so precious that the photographer, Marie Scheltens, wasn't allowed to touch it. He decided to move the camera around the object. This is how you get this drunk feeling. Ouders van nu. This is a night, the night issue of the classic Young Parents magazine I restyled. For every issue, we asked our readers to send us real, oh, this is the back cover, I forgot, uh, with a quote, uh, who said nights are for sleep, quote by uh, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, for every issue, we asked our readers to send us real pictures of their kids. They send us loads of che cheesy, how cute, look how cute he is, photos, but there were enough pearls. So we created our own image source of the real lives and of babies and tots. This was a big break with the use of stock or photos from models holding two pretty babies. Deluxe. This magazine is a bi-monthly edi edition of NRC Handelsblad, a Dutch daily quality newspaper called into life to give luxury advertisers good umfeld. It's about art, design and fashion, very high end. I try to accentuate this luxury bigger than life feeling by ignoring the size of the page with my type area. PS is the daily supplement of the Amsterdam-based newspaper Het Parool. I made a cover format they could fill in easily every day, with one strong image or even just typography. And my latest project, Paper, a daily digital magazine for the press group, the publisher of almost all Dutch newspapers. The assignment was to make a magazine picking the best out of all the press group newspapers. 
Now I had the opportunity to translate my years of experience with magazines and newspapers in the digital world. What defines a magazine when all the physical characteristics are lost? One, it has a clear beginning and an end. It's a manageable portion. You can finish it, which can be a relief. It has a clear order to Fixed components, like an interview, a column, etc. Three, it appears at a fixed time, mailbox, post time. This is why we de developed paper as an app for smartphones and iPads. And a special design for desktop. While loading uh, the app, the cover, the daily cover. And here, the, the content. You get offered 15 articles each day. This is an article. Scroll down. And you swipe to get other articles. Uh, this is the magazine on desktop, as you see. <laughs> uh, the table of content. And an article, which... This is uh, the only page who resembles, uh, which resembles uh, a magazine. The left part, you could say it's a, it's a page, uh, is fixed. And the right, is you can scroll, d scroll, scroll down. And this is the kiosk. This is where we keep all the daily magazines for a month. Some magazines may have a difficult time, but the concept of a magazine is very alive. Websites want to look like magazines. Newspapers look more and more like magazines. A lot of brands want their own magazine instead of of using ordinary flyers. And they need editorial content for their social media. In short, this is how we like to consume our information. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine. Thank you. Um, sit down, we're going to have a talk afterwards. Um, next up are uh, the guys, uh, like a fresh wave into the Amsterdam magazine scene. Um, I personally don't know them, but I know the magazine they're making. It's called Fortuyn, which means front garden. And, um, uh, well, I fell in love with, these, uh, with this mag when I saw this issue about the bonsai tree. They make uh, a whole different concept each issue. They had this, and this concept was about the bonsai tree. It was like this big. It was impossible to read, but it came along with a spyglass. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Um, um, so it's very, very indie, uh, but I love everything about it. Um, please attention for SimCard, Tom and Nanda Janssen. Thanks, Jaap. And so they came from the lowest of lands to show you some of the ways in which they made choices in editorial design and how their small magazine came to be. Fortuyn started out with three black and white pages stapled together. It was a small free magazine to be brought around their hometown to be freely available in clothing shops and bars. There was no clear motivation for starting a design and they had no concept whatsoever. They were only driven by the desire to create, which grew more and more because they were either jobless or underemployed. They wanted to publish it anonymously, but because they were still pretty narcissistic and wanted to put themselves on the cover, they wore wigs and sunglasses. 
after creating the first edition in just two, just two nights, they decided to try and keep releasing a new edition every month. Soon, they got a small cult following, and even though they tried to keep themselves anonymous and didn't put their names on the magazine, more people found out and wanted to contribute. They decided that all the contributors were to be named in the back of the magazine, but it remained unclear who had made what piece. Soon they published the first issue which included nude photography, done by two of their friends. They revealed they had been doing this for years, but only used the pictures to decorate their own bathroom. They continued to do photo shoots every month, and nude photography became one of the essential aspects of, the, of their magazine. After a while, they published the first issue which was in full color, and also the first in which they experimented with form. Instead of a stapled magazine, they created five folded posters, which contained all text and images. This was also the first edition in which they introduced a theme. The first theme was Thumbtack, which they found appropriate because of the posters. And each mag came with a nice big golden thumbtack in the ceiling. Unfortunately, most of the shops took these out because they were deemed dangerous to customers. As the number of contributors grew and the magazine got bigger, they started looking for new ways of printing and binding. They doubled the number of pages and glued them together like a notepad. Their loyal subscribers were sending complaints that pages were coming loose pretty soon after purchasing. That's why for the next edition, instead of stapling or lumbacking, they bound all the pages together with a candy wrapper. This meant that once you opened the mag, you had 80 loose pages. Also, they separated image and text completely. And if you put all the pages together, they formed one big collage. About this edition, they received even more complaints, <laughs> especially from art centers and libraries who took a subscription for their reading tables. Also, some of the contributors were not happy with the layout of the text, which was simply filled out over the width of the page. In the next edition, they combined different works from different artists on the same spread and put them on top of each other, which resulted in a layered, more chaotic issue. This was also one of the more absurdistic editions. To make matters even worse, they put a little horse in the corner of its page, which gallops if you flip the pages. <laughs> As they went on to make the next issue, they reached yet in another international milestone, when they received a submission from Hidetoshi Yamada, a visual artist from Tokyo who wanted to contribute to the magazine because it had, quote, stunning visual images. They all agreed uh, one of the most interesting things about running a small sign is that despite a limited exposure and a small reader base, people still seem to find them. Even though the Mac contained a lot of inside jokes and had a peculiar style, people who could appreciate that style still seem to find them and take their style and have a go with it, each adding their own personal touch to it. Those are the contributions that they appreciated most. Besides making a magazine, they were also frequently asked to contribute to literary nights, provide acts for festivals, and organize exhibitions and performances. This forced them to think outside the boundaries of printed paper. With one of the latest issues, they tried to apply the theme not only to the visuals, the graphics, and text, but also to the physical design of the magazine. The theme was bonsai, and they created a miniature mag, which was only readable with the enclosed magnifying glass. Their photographer took tilt-shifted pictures of landscapes and cities, creating a kind of miniature park vibe. They found print interesting because they liked playing with shape and the ability to physically attach something to your magazine. But they also wanted to experiment with video and GIFs, though their latest edition consisted mostly of online content. The theme was appropriately in the clouds. The only actual physical element of the mag was the cover containing a link, which they printed on a piece of foam so you could put it on your desk or nightstand. And so, as these editors kept struggling with the challenges of independent publishing, they continued in their quest to keep surprising and to some degree annoying their audience. While still searching for a good balance between on and offline content, they are now working on their next edition. The theme for this issue will be business time, and it will be the first issue in English. It will be distributed worldwide. Well, at least they'll send one copy to Tokyo. 
That's the story in a nutshell. Thanks for listening. Thanks, thank yeah, it's working. Thanks guys. <laughs> Always surprise me those indie guys. Uh, next up is Isabel. Uh, she's working for the coolest design firm in Amsterdam. That's what I think. Uh, the good thing about that firm is that creativ creativity is their main focus. I know you hear that a lot, but in this case it's really true, you gotta believe me. But this is of course all about the magazine she's making. It's called Foam. Uh, it's from the Photo Museum in Amsterdam and Isabel designed it. I think her magazine is a, like a modern version of the style movement. Big words, but well, I believe that. Uh, and I've got to admit I'm pretty jealous on her design approach. So um, I'm happy she's here. Isabel van Verde. Thank you for the nice introduction, Jaap. Um, so yeah, my name is Isabel Verka, and as Jaap already said, I'm the art director of, 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 hey, other way around. Hey, <laughs> Foam Magazine. Um, very quickly, something about myself. Um, I'm originally from Germany, uh, but I moved to the Netherlands 11 years ago to study graphic design and, um, well now, since 2013, I work for Van de Jong Creative Agency, um, as an art director and graphic designer, and fun, uh, Foam is one of the projects I'm working on there. So very quickly, what is Fun Young? Actually, this is us, pretty small team, uh, about 15 people of creatives, and we have clients in very uh, various fields, but we also, um, we also initiate our own projects, and actually Foam Magazine is one of those projects. But the interesting thing is actually we initiated it uh, together with one of our clients, which is uh, Foam, the photography museum in Amsterdam. This is actually their building that's in, uh, that's in Amsterdam at the canals. It's really beautiful. And they started 2001, and they approached Van de Jong um, to make their, their design, uh, their branding, and uh, their communication. But they had really, really high ambitions, uh, international ambitions, um, but they didn't have that much budget. So um, the first thing actually we came up with is like, yeah, why actually should you, for example, if you think of a museum, why should you um, uh, uh, produce a catalog, for example? Because a catalog is only a, a repetition of what you already show in the museum. Why don't you create another platform to show, or to create the possibility to show uh, more work of more photographers, um, and you can distribute it uh, worldwide? And this is actually when the magazine came to life. And that was right in the beginning when the museum was opened. This is the first issue. And both parties, Fun de Jong and the, foam, uh, the museum, they were really enthusiastic about it. And they said, you know what, we're just going to uh, keep on doing this together. So these are a couple of, uh, a couple of covers from the last years. It kind of changed a little bit. And this is how it looks right now. Um, but, of course, there is, uh, there is a certain structure to, to this whole story. We always start with a, with a theme. And uh, around that theme, we uh, collect a couple of, uh, of portfolios that really fit the theme. But they, are all, um, they have a very different approach to that theme. Um, and around those portfolios that we collect from the photographers, uh, we also have... Oh, I hope Francesca is not seeing this. This is not such... <laughs> <laughs> the best uh, infographic, but um, we have uh, we have uh, uh, texts around those portfolios, which okay, which uh, uh, talk about those um, those portfolios. So there's a little bit of a of a context. Um, well, there's one um, one thing that we do. We have a talent call once a year. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we have a talent call once a year. And um, we invite people to send in their work. Uh, uh, and uh, around this time of the year, I think March, uh, Mar March, Ar April, we're going through all these portfolios, all these work that photographers have sent us, um, can be around 1,500. So it's quite a lot of work. And then in the autumn uh, issue, we publish uh, the work of the talent. And I just quickly, uh, quickly just click through this. So this is how you enter the magazine. You immediately start with, uh, with, a, um, with an introduction, 
and then you, you get right away into the portfolio. This is from Heike Kuski. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. There's lots of space for photography. And then on the right-hand side, the, the, uh, the text is starting, the text about the portfolio. Big quotes. And the next portfolio starts. Um, well, there are a couple of design elements that are very important to, uh, to us from the beginning, actually, when the magazine was launched. And uh, one of them is, of course, images first. And that does mean we give a lot of, of substantial uh, amount of pages to every portfolio. Uh, actually, one section, which is 16 pages. And we design them completely different. Um, and we also don't mix them up with text. So uh, the portfolios completely stand alone. This one's, from, for example, from a talent issue. As you can see, we always design it differently. So this is uh, also from, uh, from a talent issue. This is from the last issue from IYY, where we collected his uh, Instagram photos and just put them straight forward into a, into a grid. And this one's also from a portfolio from IYY, from the issue, the last one, uh, where we uh, took some sequences of uh, himself, filming himself with the YY cam at night. Yeah, and this is very funny. That was a solution uh, what the former designers came up with. To really only have the image on the cover, they had this sticker design that they could just remove, and then you could just uh, uh, explore the cover completely without typography. And another solution was a double cover uh, where you could just uh, flip, uh, flip around the, uh, the flap, and then you also had the, the cover without any typography on it. Paper, very important, uh, very important thing for us. Uh, every issue has approximately 10 different uh, types of paper, and they vary in every issue. And that is not only to make a differentiation or, uh, between the portfolios, but also to make them uh, look as, as good as possible, or to come as close to the idea of the photographer as possible. Typography, of course. So here you can see what we do is really, we really separate the image from the text part. And uh, well, we're not really afraid of color and big type. And every issue or every theme actually uh, features another typeface. So every issue looks completely different, which makes it also a little bit more bookish than, than magazine-like. Some examples of that. Yeah, leaving the page. Um, that's actually something we couldn't really foresee in the beginning because we really said, Phone Magazine is not a catalog. No, it's not. But um, we had this issue under construction in 2013 about, as you can see, new positions in American photography. And we were really happy with this issue and just said, you know what, let's just make an exhibition out of it. And of course, we have a museum, so no problem. Uh, the exhibition was, uh, yeah, it was in 2013, the same year that the magazine came out, and uh, in the end it even traveled to uh, the United States to pioneer works in New York, and uh, yeah, the magazine was, of course, the catalog for this exhibition. 2016, yes, so... Uh, these are my two lovely colleagues, Elisa Mede, she works for Foam, and Dominique Kampmann, she's from uh, Fan de Jong, she's a designer. Elisa is the managing editor of the, um, of the magazine, and at the moment we're actually busy with a restyling, because um, we thought we need to uh, make the magazine also a little bit more accessible for a broader audience. And we wanted to add, at the moment, the magazine is actually only the portfolios and the texts that go with them, and of course our talent issue. Um, but we wanted to give a little bit more of a, uh, of a context, and that's why we're going to add a couple of, of features. And um, this is still in progress, uh, but uh, the features that we are, I'll give you a little uh, black and white sneak peek, the features that we are, that we are going to add will be around the, um, around the practice of the photographers. So, for example, should Knibbler made a, uh, uh, gives an example of his toolbox, how is he making actually a photograph, how does that work? A couple of other artists, Lucas Foglia, Krista and Andrew, they are going to give a, a, a what's new. Hey, they were, they were featured as, as, um, as talents before, and now they're going to give us an update. Um, Augusta Gabutez sent us a, send us a, uh, a self-portrait, and uh, well, we have to see uh, what comes out of it, and uh, you will be able to see it soon, I guess. But, uh, well, for now, thank you. <laughs>
I'm losing this. <laughs> Thanks, Isabel. And here's Steve again. Um, so, so yeah, do, do you have a question you'd like to start with? Uh, I will leave that up to you. Okay, man. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, so, Sabine, I was really struck by um, your Train magazine. So, I can tell you that um, Train magazines in the UK do not look like that. Train magazines in the UK are pretty ugly. I've been involved in making one as well, so I'm not just like... Is, is that kind of representative of of Dutch public transport reading material, or is this kind of a special case? I think this was a, a very special uh, product. For, it it uh, existed for years, but now it's, it's gone. Uh, how long ago did it go? <laughs> how long? So where, when did it finish? Uh, I think... Three years ago, something. Yeah, quite yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. So that's a pity, but yeah. And is is that because of like a more general? You know, is that because they had to bring advertising in to kind of keep them out going, or is it? Uh, it's difficult to say why why it's got why they they stopped it because I think it was very successful. Yeah, it it was definitely very successful. Uh, you couldn't find any issue. Um, in the trains because everybody was stealing them and taking them with them home. Um, I think it's a budget thing. Um, yeah. But it's a pity, you know. It's, it was a great looking magazine. Yeah. And it was doing, it was pushing the borders in magazine design. And, and so, the, I mean, when you kind of look across the, the spectrum in the Netherlands, is there other stuff like that now? Could you put your finger on something that you say, you know, this is being done brilliantly, it's just in the public domain, you can just have it. Pool. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. Vice was doing this, right? They were, they were just putting uh, uh, free magazines on the floor of clothing shops, but they're, they're doing that all around the world, I guess. Uh, there's not really... Well, you have, you have a, a magazine called Glam Cult. Oh, yeah. That's what I think is, is very interesting. Isabel designed it also. I just heard. I didn't know. <laughs> I need oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, Glamcode is a magazine. Uh, I, I worked for Glamcode before. I worked at Fanny Young, mm -hmm. and it's an independent style paper. And, um, yeah, it lies around in stores, and you fi sometimes find it in the train. And, uh, yeah, it just goes its way. So, yeah, this is one example, I think. But, um, yeah, but and, and it's also successfully... <laughs> It's also <laughs> successfully with advertisements. And yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're very uh, much. Uh, it, it's really about uh, uh, lifestyle, about fashion. Um, they have um, they have uh, uh, well big advertisements in it and can finance themselves. So it's it's for free, and uh, which is really really nice because the content is amazing, and um, yeah, it was really nice to work uh, to work for them. Yeah. I was actually wondering, you showed us uh, these slides with the sticker on foam, yeah. and then, uh, being, uh, then after that there was, uh, uh, there was one with a picture up front, and then yeah. with uh, typography or some graphic element on top of it, which works very well, but then you do open it up, and then there's the picture again. I mean, why not do it the other way around if you want to show the whole picture so badly? We wanted that so badly, but of course, if you really want to lie in the shop and people want to know what, you, what they want to buy, then yeah, it was a bit of a problem, but that was, that was always a little bit of the, what are we going to do, you know? Mm. Are we going to be really strict with our concept, which I think, of course, would have been better, but I think uh, it might have been a bit problematic uh, with, uh, with selling enough copies, so... Uh. But, but don't forget you're talking to the guys who deliberately made a magazine know, that... Know, <laughs> yeah, it's easy talk for us, but I'm just interested. But I mean, yeah. If, it, if it's such a good picture, I mean, people yeah. will buy it. Well, people will open it up and just see its foam. That's a good argument, yeah. Um, so so let's, let's come to, to you guys then, because it seems to me like listening to what you're doing, it looks amazing. And are you seriously doing the next one in English? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's brilliant. That's great. <laughs> Um, you seem to be wanting to break a lot of rules. You seem to be like, you know, kind of, you want magazines that fall apart, you want kerning that looks weird, you want the... Where, where's, where, where's that come from? Yeah, um, well, every time, uh, every time we're starting on a new one and we're starting on a new theme, uh, we're 
I'm actually asking, uh, we're actually asking ourselves the question like, why are we making a magazine? I mean, why should it be a magazine? So, and of course it's nice to have something physical and stuff, and, and it, it, it works really well on a coffee table, but um, uh, yeah, from that question on, uh, you can do it, everything you want every time. It takes a lot of effort, but uh, yeah, you can just throw the design or the entire form around. Was there a question? Yeah, Sorry. I think, you know, we're not, we're not really going to make any money with it, so we might just as well do whatever we like and, and, and have fun doing it. And, uh, yeah, I think we're not pampering the, uh, the readers, you know. It's just you, you get what we, what we make and we, yeah. I, I don't know if breaking the rules, we just set our own rules, I think. And, uh, yeah. So you disregard the rules? I think so, but I don't, I don't really know all the rules, to be honest. But, uh, there, are, there are no real rules. I mean, the only rule, uh, uh, there are only rules that are uh, combined with making money. If you don't have that, you can do whatever you want. Okay, no, but the, like a rule in terms yeah, of being cool able to read text. If you, if you can a, a word out so far that you can't read what it says, or it makes it more difficult to read. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but the, I mean, that's a rule, right? That's like you should be able to read the words. <laughs> uh, you, you yeah, I mean, you just like, to put in a little effort. Let, let's quote David Carson: "Don't mistake uh, uh, readability for communication." Uh, you just quoted Carson at me. I'm going to just I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave just, that alone. Cut it off there. <laughs> Sorry. No. And the, and in terms of sort of like this whole idea of, I mean, you know, we're, we're here today under the auspices of Dutch design. The, and it seems to me that all of you with your projects are like way, way sort of ranging far and wide. Do you, I mean, with your magazine, for example, do you even see yourself as Dutch? I mean, that you, like, it's international talent, it's international ambitions. Um, ooh, that's such a difficult question. Um, I don't think so. I think there are a couple of elements in the magazine that are in a way Dutch or like, you know, can be can be seen as uh, something that comes out of this heritage. Something that I was uh, I had these discussions before, and people say like, yeah, something which is really Dutch is they don't want to. They live in such a small country, and they they don't want to waste space. So there is not a lot of white space. Um, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, of course, we have a we have a uh, we use a, we have a lot of uh, love for photography uh, for uh, for typography, and we use it really bold and not afraid of color, not afraid of of making a bold statement, but. Yeah, I think it's always a bit difficult to say that this is typical Dutch. I don't think I would, I would say that, no. Well, yeah, globalization is, of course, also yeah. happening in, in magazine country. But I think uh, your, your magazine has got a kind of a boldness, a kind of a directness that you don't see a lot of in, in a lot of other places or magazines. So I should say that's a little bit Dutch. Yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although you're German. Do you, do you have a Dutch feeling? <laughs> Dutch feelings, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, we, we, we thought about this before. Maybe, uh, I think there's this, um, uh, it's through internet you can get inspiration from anywhere and maybe Dutch, uh, uh, maybe the Netherlands and uh, Germany and Scandinavian uh, uh, countries are, are just more or less getting this trendy, minimalistic vibe going and they're, yeah, I mean, everyone is just uh, copying that of, of each other. Um, so maybe everyone's just looking for, okay, now we're minimal, we're doing this avenue thing, what, what, what do we do next? So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, for me, it feels like everyone is just uh, looking what to do after minimalism. Well, so is that a bl bold I don't statement? know if this is a, a trend thing only. I think it's more, it's, it's deeper, it's, it's, it's in our... Yeah, national character somehow. I think this 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 tendency to be what exactly to is be in sober it? and yeah. yeah okay yeah to so be sober. I don't think that it's 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 only a trend. It's 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 it's, it's more, something that, that runs that. deeper than that. Yeah. But then I guess in your case, like you're kind of like you're not sober. Like you're like the you guys are, are like editorially <laughs> drunk on the page <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's the sober approach. Uh, no, yeah, actually, I mean... Um, no, it's, yeah, sober is, 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 
it's it's kind of boldness also. Eh? So. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we've not been doing this for for long enough to know what happened before. 2010, yeah. so. Okay. <laughs> no, no, but I, I've been in there, but um, I think, yeah, I, I mean, I was gonna actually gonna uh, wanna talk about uh, uh, how you um, end up uh, doing trends uh, instead of setting them and being in this, uh, in this thing of three months every time and you're like, oh, everyone uses this color, I'm gonna, or you're like, I really feel like using this color right now and I don't know where it comes from because it's really ugly, but I really feel like doing it. And you just start doing it and everyone starts doing it. And I mean, that's a sort of like a zeitgeist beschreibung. Uh, uh, but uh, um, yeah, I feel like in that, in that case, um, uh, you don't really have to have a lot to say. You're just, you're gonna do whatever you think is in that zeitgeist, I believe, but yeah. Uh, and the, I mean, the, I think it's that's really, really important because the, I mean, you look at independent magazines and you get like we were talking before about like the uh, independent does not equal good thing. And I think a big problem that you get is when people start, you know, they've got their quarterly deadline, they've got to get something out, like the, it's turns into a bit of a rush and stuff. But I think it's so important that you do just completely keep changing things up and and following the thing that you're interested in. So that, that is good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think we've probably only got a couple of minutes left. Uh, uh, does anyone in the audience um, have any questions? You're going to have to shout if you do. No? Yeah? <laughs> Never ever. <laughs> Um, I'd, I'd like to um, ask a question about the digital side as well, because that's something that you all touched on in different ways. The, Sabine, the, like, you've obviously been doing a lot of work with this at the moment, with paper. Yeah. How have you found, like, kind of, is this something that you're like, really excited about, or do you feel it's something that you just kind of have to do because that's what, you know, that's <laughs> no, what people want now? It's really exciting uh, to, to, to think to try to, to, to make something without these physical uh, opportunities, like paper, and uh, to, to define what a magazine is without having this, 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 this the real physical uh, appearance. Uh, but on the other hand, it's, it's difficult because you're, you're more limited. You're not able to, 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 to play with types uh, or with, with typography. Uh, it's, it's more a format, a format that you have to, to fill in. And that's the less interesting part of it. So, so someone said to you, kind of, I said, um, on Monday, you have to start work on a project. Would it be a print project or a digital project? Wow. Uh, I think a digital, yeah. Really? really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, let, let's go down the line, actually. I think we've probably got some mileage in that one. That's the... Um, Print. Prints? Yes. Uh, how do you feel about digital? Um, oh, it's really interesting, and um, there, there are lots of possibilities, um, but still, I think my heart is, uh, is in print. I, I can make that very short. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know if we all three agree, but yeah, I actually like uh, like digital very much because um, with print, uh, you don't have to really know a lot about a printing, so you can do the design part all the time, put all your effort into it, and then you know it's a fixed format, so it's going to go to the printer and it's done. And with digital, um, uh, we try to do stuff ourselves, and you find out, okay, I can do animation, I can do movement, I, I have this scrolling page, which has to resize all the time. Uh, so, uh, a part is designing, and a part is actually puzzling, sort of new kind of puzzling, which was, yeah, the other way around in print, but, uh, and uh, so you, I think if you have the same amount of time, you have to divide it up into thinking about how you're going to do it, and making it all liquid, and designing it, and uh, so that's my, why maybe some people would say print's better, because you can just spend the whole time on designing it, but that's, yeah.
Yeah, I think the, I like print more, but you, as an independent magazine, you have to have an online presence. Otherwise, n no one's going to find you, especially if you're like that small in the bookstore, just, you know. So uh, I don't think you have a choice. You have to do both. Uh, but, but, but yeah, if you ask me what I like most uh, to read, I like print better, yeah, to, just to have it in your hands. And, uh, and it, yeah, you can, uh, you know, play with it and surprise people more, I think. Easier, I think people are easier to surprise with print than uh, online, yeah. The, but it's diff, more difficult to do a shaving foam cloud um, in print, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, how about you? What's the, like your, where, well, where do you uh, sit? No, I don't think that's a question. You do both. Uh, if I would found, I would, when I would design a new mag or a new title, I would do both. Yeah, it complements each other. Yeah, of course. And it's more messy. It's more messy when it's print. You can fold it. You can cut it in half and you can throw it away and <laughs> so the, so I think that we, we probably need to um, wrap have we had a five have we had a minutes warning yet I've been looking this way mm. no That's we're right. okay okay the, um, so with your um, with the project and it keeps sort of like shifting and changing and becoming new things like is there a, like a goal in sight is there like something at the end or is it always just the next thing well every month we say uh, Okay, maybe we have to stop the magazine, <laughs> and then we go. <laughs> Just, um, but yeah. is there a, a goal in the long way? I don't know. I just, I just think that we want to uh, exp um, experiment more and with form and online and with everything and uh, keep teaching ourselves. And, yeah. yeah, I think the only end in sight is when we get bored and, and we're just like, oh, I don't know why we're doing this anymore. But I. Well, I don't think that's soon, but you, you never know, you know. So, yeah, the end, it, it will be boredom that will uh, kill a magazine. <laughs> the the classic end to an independent magazine, when yeah. the people get bored. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but you've just gone English. I mean, that's like, that must be a massive change. That's the, the, what, what was behind the move to going English? Um, what was behind T the move? Talking to you here, hoping to get on Stack Magazine. Yeah. <laughs> I w <laughs> Definitely on sampler. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I'd, I'd be really, really interested to talk about that. Um, but let's not do this here. Um, and, and in terms of like, sort of, is there like an end goal for you? Have you got something you're aiming towards? So the so with the mag, like, so you, you go like kind of issue to issue. Yeah. But but is there some is there like a bigger objective? Is there a bigger thing there? <laughs> I think that's a hard question. Um, well, I think I think how we how we uh, our approach to the magazine is actually every magazine is, an, is a one shot project in a way. So there's not really a line that we're following, but we're really looking at, at trends and what happens in photography and what we would be a good um, and very interesting way of, of looking into a theme. Because uh, yeah, that's that's uh, the last thing what we want to do is of course doing something that's completely uh, for spell. Predictable. predictable yeah so um, but there's not really something yeah I think it's just following the trends and following uh, what what photographers are doing and really being aware of that yeah yeah um, and having said at the start I wasn't just going to go up and down the line with the same question <laughs> uh, Sabine I'm interested kind of the it, when you're in all your work so you, you started way back there as a little girl and like you sort of like come all the way through. Have you, have you got a thing that is kind of leading you through this? Is there a thing that you're working for? Uh, well, that's very intu intuitive. I, uh, I can't say that, no. It's something's driving me, but <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I found out that I was doing this uh, at, my, at an early age. But uh, yeah, it uh, wasn't something I was aware of. <laughs> yeah. And the, and so you you like how many copies of the that magazine are now left? That's like kind of what like one copy? <laughs> no, there there's only one. <laughs> only one ever. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, no, unfortunately, yeah. And the and did your daughter completely rebel against like is she an accountant now or something? Kind of. 
having been made to illustrate on your blank covers as a girl. <laughs> yeah, she's she's uh, she's 18 now, so. Uh. <laughs> And interested in following yeah, your she, footsteps, she's, or she's, 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 she's a photographer now, so or studying. Yeah. Nice. Um, that feels like it's 15 minutes, right? That was like that's a. a I guess. Yeah. I think so. Sure, yeah. We're finished. I I think that um I think that's probably. Is there anyone there? <laughs> <laughs> How long do we have left? How long left? Five minutes. Okay, all right. You can count to 300. <laughs> <laughs> How, who knows the Dutch national anthem? <laughs> um, okay, sis, you've got to help us. Give us a question from the floor. Or email. We got, there's an email for questions. There's an email I mean, for questions? Come on. There are no questions here, okay. I think I think I feel like we've reached our natural end. Yeah. Yeah. Boredom. <laughs> <laughs> That's very much. Good.